Welcome to the Hound's Tales Podcast, your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. Stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So drop the gate and cast your hounds for another episode of the Hound's Tales Podcast. All right, everybody, before we get started, this is going to be ran a little bit different tonight, but I want to send a quick reminder uh, before you start listening to this episode, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for me, um, whatever listening platform that you're using. We're also going to be available on YouTube Music now as I'm working on editing this podcast to getting that available on the YouTube. So y'all be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on all your listening platforms. It helps me and helps the the show get the ratings up and it provides it to more people. Uh, It really does me a big favor and uh, I can't thank y'all enough for listening without any more hesitation. Here we go. Got a pickup truck with a dog box Slam full of hounds that don't know when to stop Until old male Rambo's his name It's quick on his feet, hell on game Got a little chip in the back of the pack She ain't real fast, but she's true on the track She's got to drive and she's got the guts And that's why she's gonna run with us It's in the blood in your veins, you can't Time is passed down through your family name. It's a pack of dogs coming through the pines. Lights of fire in a young boy's eyes. It's the word of the hound. It sounds just right. It's dog time. Welcome everybody to the Hounds Tales podcast. Tonight I have a special guest with us. If anybody has been uh, listening to any kind of dog hunting music, uh, we've been in desperate need of a good uh, a good houndsman song, especially sent around the the, del- the the deer dog community. Uh, tonight I have Carson Robertson with me. How you doing, buddy? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody? Let everybody kind of know who you are and and. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, Carson Robertson. I'm from Iowa County, Virginia. It's uh, southeastern Virginia, uh, near Virginia Beach area, uh, Dismal Swamp, just about an hour up from the Carolina line, I'd say. Uh, Chesapeake, Newport News, uh, all around this area. But uh, I've had dogs since probably I was old enough to drive. My brother, he had dogs before I did and uh, kind of got me into it. More so, uh, some guys around here I hunt with in the hunt club, they kind of got me on it, too, you know, at the same time, and, and uh, I took to it, man, and uh, and enjoyed it and developed a passion for it, and and something that I love to do and still carry on to do every day I can. That's awesome. Uh, it's definitely an addiction. Once you get that first bark in you, that's it's. I swear, it hooks you. Yeah, no doubt, man. It's uh, it's pretty cool to hear you say the dismal swamp. You know, a lot of I didn't until I got into the fox hunting stuff. I'd never even heard of the dismal swamp, but that seems to be a very, uh, very hound dog hunting community. Um, I mean, they even have a dismal swamp organization that puts on hunts in the field trial world. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to hear somebody else talking about that. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's always, man, they're, they're heavy involved, does in the swamp area, you know, you, you hear all, a bunch of them guys are hunting around Chesapeake area, and the, the swamps and the terrain, type of terrain they hunt in, man, they put them dogs through is impressive, you know. Yeah, yeah, I was just did a, uh, I just did another episode with, or I did a, re- recently did an episode with uh, Billy um, that owns uh, the uh, Outdoor Dog Supply. And he was talking yeah. about, man, that hunting down there is just, it's unreal. It's something to be, <laughs> it's something to be, you know, it's something to go witness if you've never been able to do it. I'd love to get down there and try it out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, I, I was listening to that podcast uh, last week or one day this week, I think. But uh, right. yeah, yeah, that was a uh, that was good. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, you said you got into it around when you started driving. What what kind of what got you into it? You know, was it somebody that got you into it, or you know, what what got you into the dog hunting? Well, I say you when I started driving. That, that's pretty much when I had my first pack of hunting dogs when I first started driving. You know, I mean, I think most people they kind of can get and do get doing their own thing when they start driving, you know, and get their own pack. And that's how it was for me. My brother had dogs, uh, you know, before, ever since he could drive too. You know, and a lot of guys in the hunt club, uh, you know, name a few names like Daniel Boyd and Brett Packer, all these guys, you know, uh, who live around in the community and hunting the hunt club. Uh, you know, we kind of. Uh, I guess say uh, they were kind of mentors to us, you know, growing up hunting out here, and uh, and they kind of got us into it uh, more so than anything. But uh, we just, I just, uh, you know, always turn loose every chance I had. I've always hunted uh, out here with right. the hunt club that I hunt with. I've always been a part of that hunt club since I was young. Gotcha. And uh, uh, my dad hunted, you know, hunts out there. He was a president for a little while. I was a hunt master. My my brother, he was a hunt master before I was, and then he's he's back doing it again this year. So he's in the hot seat again this year. But uh, uh, you know, I grew up grew up out here, right where I hunt, right around where I hunt at, and uh, gotcha. it's called Moonlight Hunt Club. Okay. One of my great great granddaddies was a founding member of of Moonlight Hunt Club, and uh, uh. That's my granddaddy, awesome. he's he's still out here hunting. Yep, my uncle he hunts with us, and he's he's always you know had dogs. My granddaddy raised dogs, and my uncle both raised dogs. Uh, so, so definitely yeah, something I mean, that's been passed down through the generations. Then, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Now I want to I want to stop you for a second. You know, uh, you said hunt master. Um, I, I I've heard of this. We don't in, in my club over here. We don't have a hunt master. And I feel like that may be something that you could touch on and kind of explain what that is for everybody that may be listening. Don't, don't understand, you know, what, what is a hunt master when you're talking in a hunting club like that? Yeah. So the hunt master, he pretty much just dictates the hunt and, uh, organizes everything. And, uh, when he shows up to the club that morning, usually he's got his plan together where he wants to go that morning and, uh, and, uh, talks to all the dog owners, when they show up, you know, whoever shows up, you might have eight packs of dogs, ten packs of dogs, you might have two, you know, you never know, and whoever shows up that morning, whatever, whoever it may be, and you kind of got, and you pick, the hunt master decides where you want to hunt at, you know, and uh, Interesting. And, and That's... y'all just, y'all, y'all coordinate through, and all throughout the day, that hunt master, you know, is in charge, and when people are looking to turn out, you know, they, they go to him, and, and uh, huh. whether he wants them to turn out right when they get their dogs back back in that block or or to wait for them and have another hunt you know established but uh it's a uh it's a thankless job man it's one of them jobs where you uh you get you don't get no recognition when you're really killing bucks and killing deer but right uh uh when you when you are killing them you know it's it's uh yeah one of them things right mm-hmm. right right yeah i see i i've heard of different clubs doing that doing that style you know having it very organized throughout the day that's not you know we're my club that we hunt in and the other i, I hunt with two clubs and neither one of those clubs are like that you know i'm not saying it's unorganized but it's very much when you get there um I've always thought of it as a pecking order. You know, you kind of go off of last season's, uh, and, I, and I, I may be out of line saying this, but I, 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 the way I look at it is we kind of go off of last season's performance. You know, if, say, you know, one right. of the guys had good dogs last year, normally the first chase of the season goes to him. If he still has the same pack of dogs, it's like a, it's almost like a rite of passage. Like, okay, you had the best dogs it's not something that's like uh, broadcasted, but everybody everybody knows. Like, okay, that he's got the best dogs. We're going to let him make that call. If he doesn't want to turn loose first, fine. Then if he does, great. And then whoever turns their pack loose, that is who kind of makes the plan for that hunt. So it's it's really interesting to hear a different really? concept to how y'all do it. Yeah, I mean that you know just hearing that. Well, what you just told me, you know, that's that's very different, you know. And I right. Mean, to each their own. Everybody has their own opinion on things, and 
and that's one thing about Huntmaster. You know, you got the uh, you, you're going to have a lot of opinions from a lot of people. Uh, a lot <laughs> of sure. people are going to try to pull you one way or pull you the other way and push you to do something. And, you know, I think what it comes down to is, is you really got to follow your gut and do what, do what you feel is right and, and uh, believe in that. And, and if it works out, it works out. If it don't, it don't. And uh, like I said, you know, that Huntmaster title is a uh, – some people want it, some people don't want it. I think more so – people don't want it and the ones that do want it but uh it's right. got to be somebody who's you know young who's got a lot of drive and wants to hunt a lot and is passionate about it uh yeah like i said if you're killing if you're killing deer you don't get you don't get praise you know you, you don't get some guys will come up to you and tell you good jobs or whatever right you're killing bucks some guys will come up there and say you know good job you're doing a hard job but and if you're not killing deer, you're the one to blame. So they're gonna come right at you if you're not killing <laughs> deer for right. sure. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that. Bucks. That sounds like a lot of pressure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like a lot of pressure. Be. Yeah. But I guess for you sure, can. Man, the, the pressure kind of gets delegated when you're saying, okay, it, you know, you take your dogs over here. Maybe they, maybe you're kind of put, taking the pressure and putting it on that guy. Like, okay, you now you're expected to perform, and your dogs are expected to perform. So now the pressure's on you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's awesome. It you is know, fun, man. Yeah, uh, that's uh, you know, Go it's ahead. pretty cool that it was able to pass down through the generations for y'all. You know, it seems like that seems it seems to be a very common thing um, amongst deer dog hunters that you don't you know you don't really hear a lot of people getting in as much as you do. It was passed down. It's definitely um, yeah. a, a heritage style sport. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all on how you're raised, man. You know, I think we pick up everything we do in life. We kind of pick up from uh, how we're raised and how we're brought up. And right, and, you yeah. know, that's one thing that if you're raised around it and you're brought up around it and you understand it, you know, and you a lot of times you fall right in there with it, you know. Right. And there's a lot of opinions from a lot of people that that don't have a clue about it don't have a clue about the heritage or or uh what dog hunting is and 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 is like but there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions and think it's it's bad and, and right. terrible things you know i'm sure you hear all kinds of different stories and as we all do uh but you just kind of got to take take it as it is and just just go on yeah kind of turn your cheek yep that's right that's right and that was you know when you when your song come out i had a lot of respect about it because it was one of those things that like you just said you hear so many bad stuff so it's and it's harder doing this too so i can only imagine trying to write a song behind it you know that you got to make sure that nothing in that song or in those words that you're 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 saying can be used against us and i thought very yeah. highly that you you know everything in your song was very well thought out in my opinion and and it really put a good representation of what the houndsman is. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, you know. And I, yeah, and I, and, I, and you want to portray a good image, you know, whether it's through through songs or through anything through social media, you know, and it, it all affects us. Whether it's uh, social media posts or pictures that people put up or videos, I think that's one of the worst thing you can do mm -hmm. uh, as a as a good houndsman is you see these videos up there, and and some of them you know, will be affiliated with my song and, and, you know, I don't want it to be at all. You know, you'll see <laughs> right. some of these deer down, down in the bottoms and some of these dogs on them, you know, and it's stuff that doesn't need to be seen. It doesn't need to be portrayed. I mean, ever, uh, I think every houndsman or every, everyone that I know, they, they try to have a, uh, uh, you know, quick lethal kill on, on the animal that, that you're after and they don't want to see it suffer. Right. But, uh, you know, you get in certain situations where your dogs are, you are going to have to, to do a lot of the hauling and, right. and, uh, and it's just stuff that doesn't need to be portrayed anywhere on social, social media, in my opinion. Right. Right. I mean, in the same, you know, I've always, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, a lot of people have questioned me about that and you know they're like well what if you don't get a clean shot you know what happens then and i'm like well don't attack us when i could say the same thing about a bow hunter you know what if he doesn't get Absolutely. a clean shot and you always hear and that's one thing that's never made any sense to me it's like 
a, a bow hunter, and I'm not degrading bow hunters. Please don't take that wrong, anybody listening. But it's it's just it's wild to me that a bow hunter can get online and say, "Oh, I got a shot on a deer," but he's 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 out there still. And I have no idea where he's at. And I tracked him for miles and miles and miles. But God forbid the houndsman get on there and say, "Oh, my dogs ran it another hundred yards down in the woods and, and baited up," you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, gotta gotta love the double standard in the world, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, every, every, yeah, you're gonna hear all different sides, that's for sure. Oh man, well, I kind of touched on your music there for a second. Let's let's kind of roll into that a little bit. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming this was was this your first song, Dog Tights, the one that and that really kind of seems to brought you to light. You know, was that your first song that you released? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the first song I've I've ever recorded and released and put out. And, well, it's not the first song I've written, right? By any means, it's probably probably one of the more recent songs that I that I had written. But uh, but yeah, it was one that I knew I had to get out after seeing the uh, the uh, feedback from it, you know, right. and, and social media and the response to it. Uh, you know, I knew I knew I had to get it. I knew I wanted, I wanted to get it out. You know, I wanted to do it, and and uh, right. So we we got it out, and seems like uh, seems like a few people listened to it. It took right off. Now, it took off. That's for sure. Yep. You know, it was, and like I said at the beginning, you know, it's we were in we were in desperate need of a good uh, a good deer dog. So you know, you hear little little tidbits of of coon dog mixes in songs yeah. and little little spots on that, but you don't hear anybody yeah. really talk about the deer dog. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's that's what I usually direct that. You know, my, uh, I've I've got a lot of you know I've, I've had some good things happen out of this. You know, I met uh, friend, I met a buddy of mine. He's kind of a good buddy of mine. Now uh, JJ Lawhorn, he's he's based out of Nashville. He's from Virginia, but uh, he does he puts out some songs about houndsmen and, and uh, running deer with dogs and, and any kind of hunting. But uh, yeah, so y'all check him out if y'all ain't heard him. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not. You might you probably you might know him if you're up there. Yeah, I, up there near him. I've so, heard uh, the name before, but I've you know I've just never made the association with it. But no, I have to check him out. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he grew up hunting, hunting around. Uh, I think uh, Studley, now Studley or Curl, Tappahannock. I know I hunted with him last year in Tappahannock. So. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, yeah, you'll have to. Um, I, I'm trying to talk him into it. I got a buddy of mine that lives up here. His name's Dennis Scott, and uh, his him and he's gotten hooked up with another guy, and their their music's starting to take off pretty decent. And I'm trying to get and talk him into writing something for for the hound hunting community, but. Uh, but yeah, you'll you have go. to check him yeah. out too and see some of his kind of stuff. But but yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, sure. uh, looks like you released another song here recently, correct? I did, yeah, yeah. Yep. Called, dog. It was a little while back. Yeah, dogs going on. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I listened to that, you know, uh, here not too long ago, and that's and that's another good one. You, you knocked it out of the park yeah, again, dude. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. That's, you know, that song originally, I had that, I kind of had that idea, you know, everybody, you hear people say, dog, that dog will haunt or whatever, a dog is going to haunt. And, and I, I had that idea, you know, kind of instilled in me uh, for a little while. And then it was actually one day last hunting season, I had a, I was catching dogs on the canyon line right there in the road. And a lady pulled up behind me and it was, in, it was the evening and, trying to get the dogs up and lady pulled up behind me and I could tell she was a Karen as soon as you got out of the car. <laughs> right. Uh, she was just, yeah, she was, she was coming quick too. She was going to get to me. I knew she had some choice words for me. Well, she, uh, I can't even remember. I probably can't even repeat what she said on here. You know, it was, it was <laughs> definitely some, some words in there, but she, she was carrying on, you know, like, I don't get why y'all do this. And, let these dogs run across this property, this and that, you know, just give me the whole spiel about everything. Right. And uh, one of the last things, and this, this was stuck with me, but she said, she said, uh, I don't know why y'all force these dogs to hunt really anyway. And I said, man, I said, I don't know about anybody else, but I ain't never forced one of my dogs to hunt, you know, right. they just, it's, it's in their, it's in their blood, you know? And uh, I said, a dog's going to hunt. And that, that that night, I think I went home and I think I wrote pretty much the rest of that song just because it was fresh on my mind. And, and uh, 
that's, but that's awesome. how it came from, you know, you know, and I, I, I mean, her, her chihuahua is just as much hunt as that walker I threw in the back of the truck, you know, <laughs> right. so. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's awesome yeah. though. Like that, that's pretty cool that, 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 you know, you took that and made and then let it inspire and, and bring, and bring that on for you. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no. And, and that's, that's how things get started. You know, you, uh, it's real life stories and, and, and witnessing real life, uh, right. things and, and, that, and that's how, that's how songs, songs get made, at least for me. Yeah. From what I found is, 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 is real, uh, real life happenings. But, and dog tight was the same way, you know, uh, dog tight was a little, I say the same way. It was, it was a lot different, but, uh, you know, it's got real stories in it, but, uh, right. A friend of mine, he, he passed away a couple of years ago. And, right. And he, when he hunted with us, he kept saying dog tight, dog tight. And, and it was a bunch of in the club, like, what is rough? You know, what's he talking about? Dog tight all the time. And, uh, and he kept saying it on the radio and, and so then we, whatever, we're like, all right, whatever. That's cool. We picked up on it. So we finally broke down and asked him, like, Russell, what are you talking about dog tight? And, and uh, I know I've hit on this before in another podcast, but, yeah. uh, he said, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a bond, uh, it's it's like a bond between us and and your dog, you know. It's uh something that houndsmen can only really understand this and that. Uh, and you know, it kind of stuck with me. And then when obviously when he passed away, he I knew it, it's you know you know when you got to do something. Yeah. Uh, when it's weighing on your heart. Right. And and that was one thing that stuck with me. You know, it ate at me a lot. And I knew I needed to direct <laughs> that into a song somehow. And I never really sat down and forced myself to do anything but Mm -hmm. one night it it, it all just came together and uh yeah and that's awesome just came up with what i know and and uh put it out and seemed like some people could relate to it and yeah yep i think the one thing that got me with that song and that's you know that's that that really is an awesome story like that's it, 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 it to me that makes the song even more special that it's almost a tribute song to this guy yeah you know it's it's oh, what yeah, it seems like sure. it's it's very much a, yeah. your tribute to him and and his and the yeah. way he hunted and stuff like that that's that's really awesome yeah. that you did that um yeah but yeah I, he was a he was a great great dude and i there was a lot of guys that hunted out there that were better friends with him than i was and that's how i met him was, was really through hunting out there but and i and he was just a very likable guy and, and uh yeah so it, it was it was bad and i never i never came out and really wanted that to be the focus of the song you right know, if i don't know if this makes sense but i never wanted to, you know that him being the reason that i put this on he was the reason yeah but right i didn't want you know to use use that story yeah yeah, to yeah. right I push understand. It through, you know it, yeah. it wasn't that yeah it, it had nothing to do with that you know right but uh let but the music speak and reality, not be a sympathy he card it. right yeah that's right for sure you know but uh no, yeah, that's it's crazy, man. So, that's that's awesome. See it. I, I know, you know, it, and I agree. You know, it's about like the um, <coughs> excuse me, the old David Cooler song. You know, that every every houndsman oh, is man. probably you know everybody knows that song. You yeah. know, the the yeah. the last right. verse of that song, I felt like every houndsman can relate to. You know, and there's yeah. there's always a certain part or certain lines. And believe it or not, the the one in, the the one line in your song to me was the the jip in the back of the pack. That's not always the fastest, <laughs> but true to the track. Yeah. You know, I yeah. had a jip like that, man. She never was the fastest, but that that jip was deadly on a track, deadly on yep. a track. And that man, I just and she had passed a, a couple of years ago. And that song that when I heard that song and and heard that line, it just it brought me back to her. And I, I think you captured in that song, you know, people being able to relate to certain dogs that they had because you really described a lot of different styles of dogs, and that's uh, I, the way you wrote it was it was perfect for the houndsman, in my, in my opinion, perfect for him. Yeah, yeah, well, I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, and I mean that's you know that's all true. You know, that's just experiences that I've had. You know, my I got a 
good yep she's the back of the pack i can promise you that hmm. uh you know i <laughs> It might be a beagle in front of her, you know, uh, but <laughs> a straight up beagle. I ain't talking three quarters. Right, right. But, uh, <laughs> but she's going to be on the track, right? Well, and my brother had a dog named Rambo, and that's where Rambo came from. Okay. And uh, he was just, he was going to be something. He was a young dog when he, he got hit. He was chasing it. He was running on a buck on the county line, him and a dog of mine named Hank. Right. And uh, I, Hank I got from Daniel Boyd and uh he got hit on the on the county line, unfortunately. But uh, he was a uh, just an all around tough dog. And right. He was he was what you were looking for, and, gotcha. and a good a really good male. But uh, yeah. So so that's where I got tough old male and uh. Rambo. So and I, I hear a lot of people that can relate to that line. They have a lot of dogs, and I've heard a lot of people say, you know, one of the best dogs I ever had was named Rambo. Right. And so. Uh, it's cool to hear the stories uh, that people oh, have. It's cool to see the, the the videos that they put behind the song. Yeah, you know, and uh, and I, you know, when I when I put that song out, you know, I, I didn't even know if I was going to record it or not, right? And I, I didn't have no intentions of, of doing it straight off, right? But you, I I realized that just from doing it, talking to people, getting messages from people. Uh, I got messages from people all over the country, all over the world, Australia. I mean, all over the place. It's crazy. Oh, wow. I didn't even know they had, they run deer or, or whatever they run in Australia. You know, yeah. yeah. What I didn't even know they had them, but yeah, they 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 run a lot of Walker looking dogs there. But I had people reach out all across the country, and and uh, a lot of people, a couple people reached out to me, and they said, "You don't know what this song means to me. My son passed away, uh, <sighs> you know, last year, the year before, and and." dog hunting or hunting with dogs was his favorite thing to do and you know just every time i hear that song you know it brings me to tears or whatnot and when i heard when you put it in perspective like that oh man you know, it it changed that that changed my perspective all the way through oh and man i knew i knew i had to do it you know and, yeah. and it was a lot of people that reached out to me and told me that you know and and uh, it's crazy i mean I, I get them all the time or messages from people Man, <laughs> yeah. I I got a message not long ago from uh, a guy's mom uh, about his, her son loved the song. He passed away not long ago, so uh, uh, and just told me how much that that, that he loved that song, and and, right. and now she listens to it all the time because he was you know played it for and, yeah. and listened to it. So it's it's crazy to hear those stories. Man, but, that's awesome. I. Uh... God, man, that 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 one hit me in the chest. That's that's awesome, man. That's yeah. Th- those that that makes it all worth it. Anytime you're doing something like that, like and like you said, it's not for those reasons, but it, at the end of the day, it, it almost is for those reasons. Like, and yeah. I, you know, you know, from a personal, I, yeah. I don't write music. I I I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, and I I can't rhyme, so. <laughs> That's not my thing. But when I do this podcast, you know, just speaking from personal experience and people message me about it and that makes it all worth it. So I can only imagine that feeling of like, man, you like you change people's lives with that song. I know that sounds kind of corny to yeah. say, especially over a dog hunting sound, but in all reality, right. like you touch somebody and that man, that's, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, man, I, and I'm extremely grateful that that I could do that. You know, I, I never once thought that I could do that, and and uh, to hear the response from these people and to, to see it, it's just it's awesome, man. And That's... the feedback, and I, I appreciate everybody's you know input on it and the feedback on it, and appreciate the ones that like it, and I appreciate the ones that don't like it. Right, right, <laughs> right. There's always going to be them. Yeah, yeah. they got to be a hater on everything, right? Ain't no doubt about that. Yep. So what's, your, uh, what's right. your future looking like for your music? Are you um, you gonna play, are you writing more songs? Or, you know, I don't know if this is something you're looking to do a little more professionally or, 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 more, or full time. I, I don't know, you know, what's your, what's your goal for your music? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep. I'm gonna keep putting some songs out, you know, playing music. I I play around around town mainly here, so every now and then we'll get out and play some bars and, and uh, 
right. see how many dog boxes we can fit in the parking lot. You know, <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> uh, we played we played in Carrollton one night. Uh, a uh, place called Fat Boys up there, you know. And man, that uh, I think every parking space was was jam packed. But the it, it was majority of it were dog boxes in the back, you know. And it, and it, it was awesome to see that. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I plan on playing a lot more. Uh, That's I, awesome. You know, I'm I'm not quitting my job and moving to Nashville. Yeah, uh, right. I, 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 it, I mean, I know that. That's what you got to do if you want to play and you want to make it. But uh, if I can't deer hunt around here and then uh, uh, back home, then and, uh, yep. and I, I don't know if I, I I'd be as happy. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna still play some music and, and and put out some new some new music. I'm gonna work this week on some uh, with my my cousin Brian uh, Saving. He actually uh, recorded that song Dog Titan and, and the last one we put out Dogs Going Hunt. He's a big help of mine. He's he's my cousin and uh, he's my Pretty much my manager is what we what we like to call him. But, uh, I got you. He's good with it. But, yeah, yeah, we got a few more, a few more coming out. There's a song called "Thank You Hound," and uh, I, I've gotten a lot of requests about that. And I put some clips up of that, and uh, I've had a lot of people, friends and family, you know, talk right. talk me up about that one, you know, and try to they try to push me to do that one, and uh, that one, and one called "Listen to Them Dogs." That's a that's a pretty catchy song. I, a lot of people. Uh, push me to play that one last when I'm playing out there like you, that's the one like that's the one you need to play in. and it's cool because I haven't even put that song out and uh, probably more people sing that song when I play it live than uh than they did dog tight but uh so it's cool to hear that but no uh, kidding. and then that yeah yeah there's a song uh called sound of the hound I wrote that I don't know, probably a few months ago I just put a clip up a little while back on uh i think tiktok but i wrote that you know just thinking about uh my my nephew he's uh i got two nephews now my brother's got two boys and i was just thinking about them hunting you see them out there hunting and uh it just talks about you know uh, pretty much the stages of a boy walk around and when he's young walk around with a pup and uh walk around a field or whatever it might may be and then Next thing you know, he's riding around with his with his dad in the dog box. His brim's pulled down, his ears are kicked out to the side. You know, <laughs> ready to turn out a bunch of dogs, just like any old any old boy used to be. Right. And, uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with that one a little bit. Nice. And then, uh, another another song called Deer Hunting in Moonlight just kind of talks about about how we hunt. And that one's I, I like this song because it's it's a lot more comical and. I think a lot of people who deer hunt can can relate to it. You know, it, it talks it talks about your little Debbie cakes and <laughs> That's right. fifteen inch scrub bucks. So, yeah. Dude, I can't wait! I can't wait. Now, where can people um, where can people find your music and your and your up and coming stuff? Uh, Apple Music, Spotify is usually to go to. It's on YouTube, but uh, okay, yeah, Apple Music, Spotify, TikTok, it, it'll be up there. Uh, just i yeah. usually run most of it like kind of i used to run most of uh, like i don't know advertising i guess you could call it now and you can call it that on, on through tiktok but uh but uh yeah apple music and spotify that's that's where you're gonna find it at it's on like i think it's on amazon music too it's on okay. most of the mainstream platforms gotcha yeah gotcha gotcha awesome awesome well I wish you the best of luck with everything in your music. Um, keep on, keep on working for us. You know, any kind of good, any kind of good image, you know, and you're doing it is is good for the houndsman. And anything that's, yeah. you know, anything that we can we can use to inspire us, man. And you're doing it. Uh, it's it's good work, and I greatly appreciate the, the music. We really do, and I, I think I'm speaking for a lot of us. So. Uh, I definitely uh, definitely hope to see you do more and, and keep putting out more music. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep grinding it out. If the good Lord keeps sending them my way. So that's right, that's right. For sure. All right. Well, yeah. I tell you what. Let's um let's kind of roll into you know we talk we've been talking a lot of dog hunting, talking music, and that kind of stuff. What um. Let's let's talk deer dogging. You know, a lot of the a lot of the podcasts we do on here are a lot about field trialing, and you know we kind of touch on your deer dogs every now and then. 
Um, but you know, you you are a you are a deer dog man. <clears throat> I don't know if you've done any field trials or not, but it seems like deer deer dogging is what you're centered around. You know, um, what kind of what kind of uh, dogs do you run? I I run mainly walkers. Walkers, gotcha. pretty much all walkers. Yeah, I I did have a black and tan. Uh, he I don't have him no more, but right. I did have a black and tan that I was running, mixing in there some, uh, and then I, I do I run. I currently run a black and tan uh, that's mixed with a with a walker. My brother had a litter of them uh, a few years back, and I, he ended up getting rid of them. I ended up keeping one of them, and he's probably he's probably one of my toughest dogs that I got. Right. You know, I mean that and black and tans are mean regardless, but <laughs> right. he's, he's, a, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people, you know, was to tell you that, you know, they're slow, they get left behind and, and yeah, some of them do, but uh, this one, he, he manages, he, he holds his own with them and he's, he's pretty quick, but uh, I'm not saying that he gets around some, some of these dogs, he would definitely get dusted for sure. But, <laughs> right. As far as holding that trap, usually they'll pull ahead of them, and then when that deer cuts or something, or turns, makes a hard turn, they'll overrun that track, and he will just turn right on that track, and then they'll catch right back up. With yep. it. So that's how he runs a lot. So it, he's got his he's got his purpose. Right, right. Now your walkers are they are are they uh, uh what kind of walkers? I guess is my question. Are they like a foxhound walker? Or are they a um, like a tree like a like a coon dog walker? You know. They're, Foxhound. Foxhounds, yep. gotcha. Foxhound, yep. Yeah, they're foxhound. They're they're uh, just Yep. You know, regular regular deer dogs. That's uh, all they are, man. <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. And you know, like you talked about the black and tans, I you know, I don't own any black and tans, but we got some guys that you know, I've hunted with around some and they they are some stubborn they they're some stubborn heads but they are usually some yeah. of the tougher dogs that you see. Yeah. Very yeah, tough. Sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my uh, um, yeah, my buddy uh, Grayson Kirby out uh, up in Mechanicsville. He hunts with uh, black and tans, and I I got the chance to hunt with him. I, I actually met him through JJ when I went hunting with JJ last year in Tappahannock, and Grayson was up there, and he had his he he got a whole truck full of black and tans, and I mean they will <laughs> they will they will get on top of one for sure. No. But, see, I'm I'm a white dog man, so you're never gonna see me with a black and tan. <laughs> I promise you that. I, I yeah. love me a white dog. I'm a white dog. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. See, ain't but, wrong with that. Yep. most of my stuff is, you know, as far as my deer dogs go, they're all I call them tree stock dogs. They're they are mixed okay. up. You know who who really knows what the hell all of them are? It's I know. Like mine, I know the only thing that I know 100 percent for sure is their grandma was a purebred registered tree and walker, and the rest of it I have no idea. It's just stuff that's been passed down through the family. <laughs> how it comes yeah. along, it's probably got some foxhound in it. Probably got some regular walker. I I don't know. Sometimes you got blue tick. Sometimes you got red tick. <laughs> hey, that one of deer. Oh yeah. yeah, yep, yep. They get on one. That's my uncle. That's that's really where we got the idea from. We, to get a black and tan was my uncle. He used to always say he used to always breed a tree sock dog to his to his walker. You know, he, he used to always tell us that you got to have that nose in there yep. uh, for them in the walker for the speed. And that's what they, a lot of them guys who hunted back in the day. And I don't know, that's a, a lot of them had a bunch of crossed up tree yep. tree and walkers. That's about everything that we got in our club. That's it's pretty much what it is. You know, you got a few guys that you know that have the field trial dogs and and you know have the straight up fox hounds but most everything is that big stocky coon dog looking yeah you know tree dog you know tree dog but man well that's that's cool to hear yeah you know because, they can hold I mean, a, a lot yeah i mean yeah that's what you want and, that, and that's what you want i like a lot of club us we most of our dogs are, are we don't have much tree stock. I mean, we hardly got any. You know, I, I think I'm I got about the only tree stock, and it ain't, ain't but one or two of them. But uh, I, our club, they're built for speed. You know, I mean, right. they got, we got some guys that got a pile of dogs, and, and they're they're built they're built to run fast, and uh, they'll run and they'll right. run for sure. But now, I guess being in the swamps down there, it's a you know, obviously you got your swampy areas, but it's it's mostly flat down there, right? 
It is. It, it's man, we're in a diverse area here. It's <laughs> part part of our land is flat, and then you'll we'll get some hills, some swamps, but then you get around some of these creeks and and, and rivers. You know, we're right right alongside the James River. Uh, you get along some of these creeks, man. It, it starts getting uh pretty hilly, you know, and right. pretty steep terrain, and you know it too when you put your dogs through it. I mean, you oh, can yeah. tell your dogs so they're they're twice as big when they've been on that on that hilly terrain and valleys running up down the valleys all day. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. For the most part, it's flat land, big timber. We got everything around here. Thick, it's thick, thick cutovers. Right. See, yeah. that's I, I'd love to experience. You know, because most everything we have here is is hills. I mean, we we are up and down, right. no flat. I mean, we literally one of yeah, our sections cool. is called the mountain. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's really hilly terrain and tough terrain. So I've I'd love to get. Uh, get over that direction and see some flat Come land. On. Yeah, well, you got my number, so. Yeah, absolutely. Come I'm, I'm going to take yeah. you up on it, too. Don't you worry. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> fine. Come on down here. Yep. Now, how many yeah, dogs do you got? Def- right? Oh, sorry. No, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was I was just saying, yeah, flat land, you know, we, we got some flat land, but the, the problem with the flat land is, is that's what – uh solar that's where they want solar panels and oh uh, yeah we've has we've had some land get swamped up by solar panels uh this will probably be the first year we've actually lost it uh to them they wow. have they don't have them up yet but but they got them right near where we're at and so it's kind of put a. Uh, we haven't really heard what it's going to do to us yet but uh it's going to put a put a little change in things for sure so uh. Man, that's always so sad to hear. I mean, we just had a yeah. we had a farmer just post on Facebook that was the last time that he was cutting a field over in our neck of the woods, and he said it's getting sold to a, somebody the kids didn't want. I mean, it's like that story you always hear. The the kids didn't want nothing to do with it, and now it's getting yeah. sold to a, a mar- or a, it's pretty much getting turned into a subdivision is pretty much what's going to end up happening. Yeah. It's just, man, it's just so sad to see. It's so yep. sad to see. So yep. um, that's how it is around here. How, how many dogs do you have right now? I, right now, I mean, I just cut back last year, and I told myself I was going to rebuild this year, and uh, didn't end up working out. That slow jip that was in the back of the pack. She uh, she got locked up with uh, one of my brother's dogs, and then. Had, had some puppies and I thought I was going to keep them and ended up getting rid of them and planning on getting some more and never did get around to it. But I, I don't, I think I probably got eight that there now. I got you. But, uh, I, yeah, that's think still- right around seven, eight. So it's, I'm, I'm really hurting going into this year and I'm, but it's going to be one of them things where, that's where not I'm that gonna, bad of a pack though. I mean, that's, that's honestly yeah. about what you want in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't ever take no more than seven, eight dogs, and they, there's a lot of guys out there that take a lot more. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, I mean, uh, the, the more dogs, the better. But uh, I, I'm I'm not there to deer hunt. And yeah. I'm not there to run my dogs, but I'm not there to deer hunt. Right. And I, I don't want to be running around the county chasing my dogs, you know, yep. when we're running a hanger, hanger buck on the next road over, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to be somewhere in the – somewhere in the in the movement yep yep i've gone to a club before and they turned like 20 or 30 dogs loose at one time i'm like this is nothing but a cluster i mean you oh, can't yeah. even enjoy it with that many dogs on the ground at one time like you yeah. said there's three different chases going on i'm like golly this is this isn't fun yeah uh yeah that happens out here in too. I can tell you that. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah i'm i, I agree got, that good we got good days and we got bad days, just like anywhere else, you know. Uh, I, I, there's some some guys in the club that hunt a lot. And there's some guys that don't hunt that often. There's some guys that hunt when we hunt, hunt certain blocks, you know. And uh, right. I mean, uh, I, some. So I I don't agree with some of it and some things, but uh, to each your own. And right. And uh, you know, I'm out there to turn my dogs out, and I'm out there to hunt and, and uh, have a good time. And that's right. That's what I'm gonna do if I'm able to do it. Yep, that's that's yep, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Uh, 
<laughs> so uh, I know you talked about um, what's what you know. You talked about you know moving, you know possibly getting some more puppies and stuff like that. You know, what is your what is your future with hound hunting looking like? Are you gonna stick to just the you know getting another pack? Um, are you have you ever been interested in field trialing? Is that something that's piqued your interest in? Any? Or you know, what, where do you plan on going from here with your with your uh, with your dog hunting? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I'm. I'll never get into the field trialing, but I. I just never took to it like like some guys probably. I. I went into some puppy hunts. I had some puppy hunts, and mm-hmm. I placed some dogs when I was running this group, and that was fun. I enjoyed that, but I never. I. I broke them during hunting season these dogs that i had and i kept them out of the wire right and you know there's a lot of a hundred different opinions on that yep between a deer dog and, and a, a pin dog and and you know you got some all-star dogs and and you got some that they're going to run up and down the road when you're out there deer hunting that's right. just how it is yep but uh i, I i'm not going to say i would never do it because i i would I could see myself definitely getting involved. But like I said, my uh, Daniel Boyd, he he runs all the time. I don't know if you know uh, him or Hunter Smith. They, I think they run together a lot, but they're up there at pools all the time. Yeah, I was gonna say I and, thought and I recognized that name. There. Yeah, yeah, they they run up there a lot. You know, they're good buddies. I know. I talked. I listened to your podcast uh, with Brett. Yeah, Clyron the other day, and and uh, Smith. He, I, uh, Smith. Hunter Smith turned me on to him, so uh, I've talked to him a couple of times just just through text message or whatnot. But uh, right, but yeah, so I I can't say I wouldn't right get in get into it, but uh, it it's something that it's an addiction. You know, I had to commit to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I never sure thought I would growing up because I I grew up the same as you. You know, I grew up, my grandparent, you know, my, my my grandpa was a was a deer you know deer dog and guy and. My dad was, and I mean, my dad still doesn't even use GPS collars. He refuses to hang one of his car. His we, I mean, we live right in the middle of where we hunt, so he turns his dogs loose, and they come home. They every single one of his dogs home. It's 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 really yeah. it's 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 very old school, very old school. Yeah. That's just that's how he was raised, and that's how I was raised. But you know. With the, with the collars, it's a whole lot easier to have everything in the lot and 100 percent at the end of the night. But he's he's got that old school man, and it's uh, and and when he turns them loose, he knows they're coming home, and sure as shit they do every time. But he's the same, you know. He he refuses to go and turn his dogs loose in a pen. Refuses. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, there's a lot of older guys that have a strong input about that in the club, you know. Right. Some some of it, some of my family members too, you know. So oh, it's it's the great but, debate. That that yeah. debate will go down in history as one of the great debates of whether a pen dog and a, and, a, sure. and a true outside dog are the same thing. Mm-hmm. Now I yeah. can tell you yeah. from experience, most of the time a true outside dog ain't gonna hang in the pen. But <laughs> they no, heck no. I can tell you mine ain't. Right, <laughs> right. But um, yep. but you know the the. And I, I I enjoy talking about it. You know, I, I enjoy I enjoy that debate. And I, I mean, and I'm talking from experience too. I my, I took my when I first got into field trial and see, I, I took and I went to the an outside hunt and I placed. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it again. And I placed the second time on outside hunt. Then I went to the in the wire with these tree stock dogs and got my tail drug around. Yeah, but I will tell you when I when I was hard headed and I couldn't couldn't figure out why I was getting drug around and not understanding for a couple times that like I'm, these dogs are not made for speed, you know I noticed their habits on the outside changed a lot. So I, I'm a firm believer that too much wire will how do I say this. It'll it'll change the habit of your dog on the outside to the point where you don't trust them as much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know that, that's that's my opinion on it. You know, uh, 
I don't know. Does any of y'all's guys in y'all's in your club uh, do they do they run in the pins or is it most everybody just strictly outside? Yeah, I mean we have we have some guys that run in the pin, and I, I say it's probably more people that that run in the pin in our club, and they do outside. The boy comes from Carolina; he's he's in the pins all the time and all. Right. Uh, his his dogs are, I mean, good deer dogs. They're very good deer dogs. They I mean, we kill a lot of deer off of them. Uh, right. But uh, you know, every every now and then you see some of them dogs that hit the roads and just go right down it. You know? <laughs> right. But, uh, and, hey, and th- and then you see some that are just lights out, you know, and, yeah. and they don't miss a beat, and they're just they they they're badass dogs, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes. It, I've always said that it takes a special dog to be able to do both. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It really does. Now, <clears throat> with the um, going back on the, on, you know, still with the dog topic, is there any type of, is there any type of dog that you're looking to get? I know that seems like a very kind of open ended question, kind of odd question, but I know you hear some people's like. Some people talk about like I really want to try a red bone out, or I really want to try a uh, a bird dog out. Is there any? Are you are you pretty well set on sticking with your, your dogs like you have now? Or are you looking? Would you have any interest in trying some other dogs? I, I have interest of, of breeding that black and tan, mixing it in there with with some of my walkers. Yeah, but no, nah, prob- probably nothing else really. You know. Uh, uh, we talked about going down to the three quarter beagles or, or three quarter walkers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, right. But with with how our land is set up nowadays, but I mean it's it's just hard to yeah to get to get away from these. these I, dogs. I get that. I get that one hundred and ten percent. I I love. I've I've been saying for a long time I'd like to try some three quarters, but. I can't bring myself to, and this sounds so rude, and I'm not trying to insult nobody, but I'm, I can't bring myself to slowing the pace down. I love yeah. a dog that will get up under one and, and drive one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think about yeah. slowing down. I just can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I, I just like the dog a lot, and them, them three quarters they can move one. I mean, I've I've seen them put them in, put them in the wind more than them than long legged walkers. Right. So. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, for me, it's I probably gonna stay with with walkers, and I would like to work some more tree stock in there. It sounds like y'all got a good thing going there uh, with that. It's uh, it, it's sure, yeah. yeah, it's especially up here, you know, because you don't need that in the mountains. You don't need I say the mountains. It's not like we're up in the Appalachians, but you know, we got a lot of hills. But anyway. It, you need that that tough gritty and not, nothing that I'm not talking down on a foxhound at all cuz I mean I got mm-hmm. I have foxhounds too so I'm not talking down on them at all but them tree stock dogs are just gritty and tough and they will hold the track and won't overrun it that's my favorite thing about them is they're fast enough to drive the deer but not too fast where they overrun the track and screw it up and have to figure it back out right yeah you know yeah i get that yeah well, we are we are creeping up on the hour mark, so let's go to our closing topic here. And uh, I, I feel like I know I ask this a lot on the on the podcast, and I've, I know I've kind of ran this question to death, but I feel like it's always a good uh, a, a good topic to end on, and and I like hearing other people's opinions. So, what is something in your opinion that we can do as houndsmen? to save the sport to save our heritage you know i I mean i i feel like getting getting people involved you know getting more people involved and going out and voting i know they had to go vote today out for one and and seeing what they got planned you know i looked at that last proposal i think everybody's seen that yeah it's kind of directed directed towards deer hunting yep uh there ain't no it's cutting pretty cut and dry. I mean, people say what they want, but right. it's a it's a shot a shot at deer harness. But you know, I, I I feel like you know you need to get get friends and family involved, or or take kids hunting. You know, or take a kid hunting that you know, or, or 
you know, I think that dog hunting is one quick way to get a younger person involved because it's more exciting, you know, than going sitting up the tree and, uh, and, and, you know, waiting on a deer, where it may be, uh, be still hunting or, right. And don't get me wrong. I, I do both. I love still hunting. I do it. Uh, I hunt with a bow. I hunt, I hunt with a rifle. I hunt with a muzzleloader, whatever the state allows me to hunt with. And, uh, you know, and everybody's got their own opinion on that too, but, uh, you know, I believe in doing what what you want to, and and, and it, this is America, and you can do what the hell you want, and, right? And you're free to do whatever you want, and people can have their own opinions on things, and it is what it is. But uh, just take it with a grain of salt. But right, you know, I I feel like dog hunting can be really exciting for a, a kid. You know, they they can get involved with dogs and get to handling dogs and and get some excitement. You know, ride around all day and Unless you're sitting with my granddaddy, you might move, you know, more than once a day. Right. <laughs> in one spot, you know. Right. But, uh, but I, yeah, I mean, I feel like that. That's that's some things we can do to uh, to to make it better and to keep it keep it going, you know, and just keep portraying a good message and spreading a good word, you know. Like your podcast is a good thing. Thank you. Uh, gets people involved and gets people a voice and and uh, and and gets people. Uh, some information on, on what we do and, and, you know, not all dog hunters are bad. I think that a lot of people think that just cause you own dogs and, uh, you dog hunting that I, I think they all throw a blanket over you yep. and, and, and put you in a category, you know, that you, uh, you know, you mistreat dogs. And I, I think some of these dog kennels and some, some of these dog pens and some of these places where dogs, these dogs live is probably better than, you know, some some people's kennels are better than the pounds. I know. I'd know, rather but, pay rent than some of these dog kennels, like you said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> got heat and water bug and everything. And that's one thing that – and I, I'll touch on this, too, because that's one thing that – this really bothers me, and I see a lot of it on Facebook, and I try to keep my mouth shut with it and try not, you know, to stay out of it as much. But you see a lot – a lot of dogs getting dumped. Yep. Uh, or they – the pounds are catching a lot of walkers or, or, or hounds, I should say. And the, the first comment they go to is, is, is dog hunters dumping them. Right. And I'm, I'm not sitting here and I'm going to tell you that that's not happening because right. I, I do believe it happened. I believe it used to happen a lot more. I think that we've done a good job, uh, as hounds and as cutting a lot of that out. Yes. Uh, because it does, a, it does, it, it is a bad, a bad thing to do. And, and, I don't think any of us support it, right? Uh, you know, because it just makes it look look bad on our part. Yes. But uh, you know, it, I I just hate when people jump to that conclusion that hey, it's it's in dog hunter. They just dump that dog out, you know. Right. That, a lot of these dog hunters, they they like these their hounds more than they like their own, their own wives, probably. You know, <laughs> I mean they 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 care for them 365 days out of a year and right. feed them and and clean the pens and 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 take good care of them and, and watch them grow you know yeah and yeah and they're they pretty much I become that, part of your family yeah that's right yeah for sure some of, some people retire them and they let them live in the house you know right <laughs> give them a life so. yep yep i so, have uh, every intention on my old my old vader dog i have every intention on that he will retire at my house in the basement if i have if i have my way yeah yeah no, that's how it should be yeah i like that what you know but yeah for sure and you know and last I, year, I, I think a lot of things that people you know you said like they jump to conclusion in my mind i jumped to conclusion of you know you see these these hounds in the animal shelters and you you know a karen down the street goes and says well i'm gonna go save it from the pound and goes and gets it and doesn't realize how much energy a walker hound has and how much hunt they have. And they're like, I can't handle this. And they go yeah. dump it back off somewhere. You know, it's just yeah, as easy to point sure. the fingers that way, which, you know, I, like yeah. you said, I, I try to avoid that, that conversation as much as possible. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it, it really yeah. is unfair that it gets pointed at us immediately when there's other options out there. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, no doubt there's a – I mean – there was a instance this past year. There was a it was a puppy. It was a hound puppy on the side of the road, and a buddy of mine lives up 
uh, up the road, he, uh, Michael Wood, he, him and his girlfriend, they took the dog in, right? It was a little puppy and he didn't have nowhere to go with it. And I mean, it, it, it had no reason being on the side of the road. It was, it was tiny and, you know, and I, who dumped it? Who knows? I mean, right. it was I like to think it wasn't a houndman, but you know, you don't know. I mean, it, it could have been just a wild dog that, that had been out and they got, you know, got pregnant and had puppies and right. just kind of just got lost. But, yeah. uh, yeah. but, uh, we and er, er, somebody put it on facebook you know uh I, I, they put it on facebook right to uh you know try to find an owner or whatever maybe maybe it got away or something you know nobody said anything uh but all the comments were up there they were just bashing dog owners and bashing hunt clubs and they were like yeah some dog owners turn them out you know and hunt club guys they dumped the dog got rid of them they didn't want them but what they didn't know was it was a dog owner that went over there it was two dog owners that went over there and took that dog in and, and, and nursed it back to help and, and raise it up and, and still have it to this day, you know? So, right. so, uh, there they are hating on them saying they dumped them. And, and it's, it's us that, that brought the dog in and nursed it back to health and got it back. Right. And, you know, and give it the life that it's got now. Right. Right. That's awesome. I mean, and that's, and that's the stories that need to be presented. You know, that's the yeah. things that need to be presented because it's so easy for all these people that are against us to, to share a, a, an open-ended uh, an, an open-ended picture and make their own make their own story behind it. But when the real story comes out, it's like, oh, we're going to turn a blind eye. So the more we can put stories out like that, then the better chance we have. And I want to touch too on your uh, what you said earlier about the bringing new people in and bringing kids and stuff like nobody's presented that. So I applaud you for having that idea. I mean, that's that, that, that it, it's very, very true that I couldn't agree more. If we, if we don't bring in more people and, and show more people, then that's how the sport's going to die. Oh yeah, for sure. So I, that, you know, that's, sure. that, that's, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more that that's an excellent way to, to do that. You know, so that yeah, that's yeah, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean that's 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 what it's about, you know. And that that's 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 what it's about. There's a there was a young boy in the club, and uh, years back, he, I think he was ten or so, but he killed a, a really nice deer. I mean, it was a it's a biggest buck for some people that have been hunting out there all, their whole life, you know, right. waiting to kill. And he was ten year old boy shot it, <laughs> killed it in front of front of the dogs, and and uh, you know, we. I, we all ran over there to him when he killed it and, uh, you know, dog piled him and, and threw him around, you know, and, right. and he didn't even know what he did. You know? <laughs> and, but that's a day that he'll never forget, you know, and, and I see him post a picture of whatnot here there on Snapchat or, or Instagram of, of that day. I think he did it earlier. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and shout out to my boy, Will Cover because that's who it was. And he actually, he actually plays lead guitar on that song, song "Dog Tight," and he's playing the mandolin on "Dogs Gonna Hunt." Okay. So uh, that was that was that boy. Yeah, he was uh, just an all around good good old boy, and uh, love loves the sport, loves hunting, and and uh, hard working kid, good good old boy. But uh, yeah, so he was very ecstatic that day, and and he's definitely he definitely got the itch at a young age. So that's awesome. I'm trying to talk him. Trying to talk his daddy and let him have some dogs here. So, <laughs> like, no, nah, that goes. Go ahead and mix that uh, black and tan with your jip and uh, go ahead and split the litter with him or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, we had a guy in our club last year. His his son got his first deer. And I, I'm telling you, you couldn't wipe that grin off of his face for weeks. Weeks. Yep. And that's it, right. you know, yep. that, that's like you said, that's, that's what starts it. And if we can get more people to experience that, that feeling, man, it, it might just save the sport. Yeah, no doubt. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We had the same thing happen last year. We had two, two cousins, Daniel Boyd's daughter, Ainsley Boyd and uh, Brett Thacker's son, Reed Thacker. They both killed their first deer on the same day. It's the craziest mm-hmm. thing ever. And that, their granddaddy, he's a, He's a pillar of our hunt club. Uh, he's gone past away now, but uh, right. AP, he was a well-known man around here, and uh, and uh, he used to have a red jeep hunting. But it was just uh, crazy to see both of them kill their first deer on uh, 
on uh, the same day. You That's know? incredible. Think that he think that he had something to do with that for sure. I would say so. Yep, yep. I agree a hundred percent. That's awesome. Yep. Well, buddy, well, that's, man, that's this, why we're out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, man, this has been this has been a good one, man. I, I think that uh, I hope everybody enjoys this one. I, I really enjoyed having this conversation with you and you coming on and talking about your music and dog hunting and uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man, appreciate you having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you, sir. Call me, man. This year, we can we can come on down here. You can come on and hunt with us anytime. Absolutely. Absolutely. I might have to take you up on that. But, well, yeah. everybody, like I said, this is uh, Carson Robertson. Uh, and if you haven't checked him out yet, go check him out on your listening platforms. Uh, Dog Tight is his big song. Uh, and like he said, he's got other ones dropping. He just dropped Dogs Gonna Hunt. Uh, so y'all go check him out subscribe to them uh do the same thing with us if you haven't hit that like button yet or and subscribe button on your on your uh listening platforms make sure you do it and um i appreciate everybody out there listening and like always happy hunting find a good old dog is like striking gold one of a kind that can't be so what it's all about Hey, just Alabama singing a song It's out It's in the blood in your veins It can't be tamed It's passed down through your family name It's a pack of dogs coming through the pines Lights of fire in a young boy's eyes It's the word of the hand It sounds just right It's dog time In the days back a long time All across the world It's a state of mind If you don't like it Well that's fine But you see the look in his dog's eyes It's in the blood in his veins He can't be tamed He's waiting at the gate On any given day It's a pack of dogs Coming through the pines Lights of fire in Rambo's eyes It's the world of the hand It sounds just right it's dog time